I'm Richie's uh, partner in our endeavor here, and I really want to thank you for joining us this morning on our humble little show that we've started. It's it's a great honor to have you. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, sure. And it's all because of you that I'm doing actually what I'm doing. Because as a kid, I used to watch your show, and I started to bring my video camera fishing with me, and I would shoot little segments with my friends. And here 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 I am, you know, 12, 13 years later. And we have a show on cable here in Jersey, and we're now doing a podcast. So I really want to thank you, and you're a hero of mine in the sport. Well, I, I don't know that I deserve that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Shaw. Shaw, uh, since life is not all about fishing, uh, I read a post of yours on Facebook that you were taking your grandson. You sound very, very happy about that to, to, uh, to Disney World. How'd that go? That was awesome. Uh -huh. he, uh, that was his first trip. You know, you kind of got to let him get a little older. He's five now, and uh -huh. and uh, but he had a great time. There were some things that were still, you know, too much for him. And, right, right. And uh, some of the dark tunnels and the scary stuff was a little much. He didn't really care for those. But uh, there's a lot of stuff for them to do down there, and and so it was it was awesome. It was awesome to to watch him just really get excited about things and enjoy the deals and. It, it was just fun. So that was a fun couple days. Oh, excellent. That's great. Okay. And now we see that you have a tournament that's coming up at Oneida Lake. Now, how do you get ready for that, Shaw? Well, I've been, you know, we've been off for about a little over a month, about a month and a half that we haven't had a tournament. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been kind of, you know, lax and taking care of my stuff. And, and I've only fished a couple times. Uh, in that month and a half, mm -hmm. so most of the times I've spent with family, we went scalloping a few times, and I went uh, saltwater fishing a couple times, right. and bass fishing like once. And so uh -huh. you know, it's just getting everything back in order. I've got a lot of new baits from the iCast show. We went to the big fish and tackle show in July, yeah. And so trying to figure out where to put those in the boat and the truck, and you know, your boat's pretty much packed, and so you get a bunch of new awesome cool stuff you know, <laughs> ah, where do I put this so, uh, you know I've been in there for the last couple of days just uh, you know digging through stuff taking stuff out and I said you know I really don't use this much and I'll put this new stuff in here and and uh, so and I'm still I just kind of basically finished up with the truck and now right. I'm working on the boat so mm -hmm. I'll be in my uh, in my boat building just digging in the boat pretty much the whole day and then packing my clothes up and getting out of here first thing in the morning early very cool oh, nice nice so I hear a lot of words that uh, other fellow anglers use to describe you, and, and boy, uh, you know, among them, you know, uh, the most intelligent, uh, he's a great guy, the nicest guy, the eager guy, one of the best. I mean, how is that? I mean, to be, to be described by your fellow uh, anglers, to, to, you know, to be described like that. Well, I, I, you know, I appreciate that. I know there were... There were times, you know, when you're younger, and I see this in the progression of angling, that, you know, when you're younger, you're really trying to make a mark, and, and mm -hmm. you, you work really hard at it, and, and um, you know, I, I read the other day, or a buddy told me the other day, that, that uh, Jay Yellis and mm -hmm. another guy, a young, young kid, apparently at the FLW Championship, were fishing the same spot, and it's the only spot any time any big bags had come okay. at Lake Lanier, and he said, apparently, the last day... Jay just told him he, the, the kid was ahead of him by about seven pounds. And Jay just said, I'm not going back. Mm. And, um, you know, Jay's made his mark. And, you know, when he was real young, he wouldn't have done that. Right, but as right. you get older, you get a lot wiser. You go, you know, I've done it, and this kid needs his shot, and he's done a very good job. And, mm. you know, most likely it would be really hard for me to win anyway, so let's let's back off and give him a shot. And I think that's so honorable. And Class. When you see that as you get older that you, you get a little wiser and I and I hope I've uh, wised up over my younger days and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just think that uh, I, I, well I appreciate the comment put it that way mm. sure uh, another question that I have for you is what what would you recommend an angler to do who wants to fish at like the pro level well there's a lot of things to do but uh, to start off with the first thing is to get a good education and 
And you know, I, and I look back on probably the, the the one that I look at most often is Denny Brower and Chad Brower. And Denny, who you know, ultimate respect for Denny Brower. He was our number one league money winner until Kevin finally passed him and then blew everybody away. Yeah. Uh, but Denny, for so many years, was the man. You know, he was the the all time league money winner and just was the greatest angler out there. And he told his son, he said, you know, I'll help anyone I can, but first off, you're going to get your degree mm-hmm. and, you know, go to college and get a degree and, and then you're ready. Then no matter what happens on the fishing circuit, you can always fall back on that degree and have a job and, and do well. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I thought it was awesome they did that. You know, he would guide all through the summer. So when he got off for summer uh, from college, he would guide all summer long. And then uh-huh. uh, so he kept fishing all the time. He, he kept his skills up. He learned uh, and guiding every day teaches you a lot more than uh, what we do or, or, or more of what we do as anglers because you've got to keep up with the fish. The guiding, you know, you may go back to the same spot and go, oh, my gosh, I'm not catching them here. What happened? <laughs> and since you're there every day, you know, rain or shine, it really teaches you so much about fishing. Mm. So um, what a great way to learn. And then, then he went ahead and got his degree and, and went out there and, Fish professionally on the BASS circuit, one, one or two, and fish on FLW and one, one or two. So I mean, he's a really super young man, and I just think mm-hmm. that's the best way to do it. Go mm-hmm. to school, get a good education, take some courses in marketing, mm-hmm. take some courses in advertising. Right. Um, and the reason for that is in, in business because you're going to run your own business. That's right. basically what a professional angler does: mm-hmm. run his own business. So, um, and if you know about marketing and advertising, those things will help you in your with sponsors and then always you know keep up your fishing mm-hmm. and uh, you can always take courses in you know fish biology and right. and all kinds of things like that also to help you out mm-hmm. very cool so uh, yeah that, that was like one of my next questions as far as you know the sponsorship uh thing people think you know you get on the water you have a good day on the water you fish your your tournaments or what have you and that's it until the next tournament but it's a whole other um uh, business behind um professional bass fishing when it comes to the sponsors you have obligations used to be in the past you know what could the sponsors do for me but now it seems like you know what can you do for your sponsor yeah that you know i've had that opinion and that's a great quote because i've had that exact quote um ever since i started so many people said you know you know they come in and try to solicit sponsors and it was all about what you know the sponsor could do for them and Mm -hmm. i've always had that opinion in fact quite a few of my sponsors in the early years, I would get paid nothing. I would just say, listen, I love your product. Let me show you what I can do. And I'd go out there and do it. Next thing that you know, they go, man, this guy's really hustling for us and getting a lot of press and getting mm. faith in, in tackle stores and, and uh, winning tournaments. And they'd go, heck, we're going to pay next year, you know, and then, and then it'd work into a long time relationship. And, and um, so I've always said that, you know, is, uh, is to, to work for your sponsor first. And, and because that's what we are, we're basically salesmen. Mm-hmm. Right, with right. the current elite series, the way it is with the entry fees and the money, uh, pretty much, you know, there you can make some money, but really what it comes down to is the cost of doing business for sponsorship. So, okay. um, you know, you get so much press. They have a huge press pool with, uh, you know, the shows on ESPN and the shows on Outdoor Channel right. and all the magazines and the internet and everything that they have. So you have a huge media pool that goes along with BASF mm-hmm. and that allows you to keep your name out there and, and develop value for your sponsors. Mm-hmm. The actual tournament circuit, you know, doesn't pay you quite as well, but it does give you the biggest, uh, biggest avenue to make money. 